Hello guys, um, here we go for part two of the quadcopter. Um, in the last part, as you remember, I had some trouble getting the, the quadcopter to behave. Uh, it seemed that whenever I was trying to, to, to start the project, it would basically start drifting towards one direction. Like for some reason, the forces were not being applied equally or equally distributed across the body and it was starting to drift. Um, I have to be honest, I don't really know what I did to fix it and hopefully you didn't get the same problem. But if you did get the same problem, one thing I you could try is to delete all of these from the quadcopter body and adding them again. Uh, paying special attention to create the meshes first uh, with the proper locations in them and the proper scales um, and then adding the engine components to them uh, also paying attention to keep the location at zero 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 because the location is going to be relative to the engine mesh um, and one other thing I did and it was really dumb I don't know if that was what it fixed it I basically went to the box collider and I unticked start awake. I ran the project and it was okay. It was like hovering like it is right now. And then I unticked it again uh, and it's, you know, uh, or I ticked it again and it stayed, it still worked. So <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if it was the redoing of the body that did it or if it was this flag and it was some kind of weird and real bug or something like that but in any case now we have a, a stable uh, altitude hold as you can see which means we can continue to implement the pitch and roll and i will leave the yaw to a third part where i will probably also tweak the the pid settings a little bit because i'm not really happy with the way the pid uh, settings are working for the pitch and roll in my current implementation, but you will see what I mean in a second. So let's continue where we left off. We were in our event graph. We had a function to handle the throttle so we can press shift and control to go up and down. And we have the altitude stabilization code that basically uh, generates the PID calculations to attain the desired altitude value. Uh, taking into consideration the current altitude value that the quadcopter has, which is going to be, or it is the Z coordinate. And then we take this value and we apply the same amount of force to all the engines, which makes the uh, quadcopter basically hold the altitudes that we like. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do today is uh, we're going to create a new function called handle pitch. And this function is going to, like all the others, is going to take a, in the delta time as a parameter of type float. And before we define this function, let's go to the project settings and to the input part. And we need to configure uh, an axis mapping for the pitch. I'll just press here and let's call it quad pitch. And the keys I'm going to use for this is the W and S. So W to pitch forward and S to pitch backwards. So minus one for the S. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to work <laughs> exactly as I have in my reference pro uh, project because I had to redo the engines on this one. I'm not sure they sync up perfectly in terms of coordinates, but uh, let me just double check really quick. This is minus. Yeah, this might not work. Let me just modify them just so I don't need to rethink uh, some of the codes. I will just change these to the same values that I have in my reference project. Uh, this is 11.11. This is 11.11. Uh, number three is minus 11.11. And number four is 11 minus 11. So, like so, quick check on the viewport. Engine one, engine two, engine three, engine four. Compile, save, let's play. It's still holding the altitude as it should. 
cool. Um, okay, so the handle pitch function is going to be uh, kind of simple. So first thing we want to do is multiply the delta time by the value that we get from the quad pitch input axis value. We just multiply this one so we know the small amount of pitch that we need to apply. Then we are going to multiply this value by <clears throat> a factor uh, that we want to be able to tweak. So I'll create a new variable called pitch roll multiplier. And this way we can, I will create later one for uh, the roll so we can independently control how fast it pitches and, and rolls basically and I'm going to put the a big value on this uh, let's say 50,000 um, again feel free to tweak this this is what worked for me uh, feel free to tweak it I'm going to check if this value is not equal to zero and only if this value is not equal to, to zero, I am going to apply this. So there's no point in making these calculations and adding these forces to the engines if there's actually no force at all. So I'm going to do a branch here. The condition is going to be whether or not this is different from zero. And if it is different from zero, I am going to add some force to the engines. And so the engines we need to apply force to are going to be the so for, for the back engines we need to apply a positive force and for the front engines we need to apply a, a negative force that way uh it will just tilt forward so engine two and four they need a negative force oh sorry uh engine two and four they need a negative force so they go down and engine one and three, they need a positive force, so they go up and uh, the whole thing just tilts forward. Um, so let's start, let's get the engine one, let's add a force to this guy. Remember this is the true pin. And we are going to do the same for engine three. So let's get engine three in here. And let's just copy this for the other ones as well, because we know we want to apply some force to them. It's just not going to be, it's going to be the negation or the, the negative version of, of the other. Uh, so this is one, three, this is going to be two, four, two and four. And the force that we're going to apply is going to be exactly the same and it's going to be the one that comes from here. So I will just make this as neat as I can, like so, and like so. And for this one, I need to actually uh, negate a float. There's a function for that. You can do that here, like this. It's actually going to negate the whole value and then we can start immediately using it here and let's make this neat like this okay I don't need this one but just for the sake of this being prettier there you go so in principle if I use this on the event graph I'll just handle pitch here I'll just make it copy of this guy here nice thing like this and in principle if we press w or s yeah it tilts forward fantastic now it's really crappy but it tilts forward and we can more or less try to control it oh remember that we only have altitude stabilization for now <laughs> so this is going to be almost impossible to control um, so in order to, for this to be controllable, we also need some kind of, uh, you know, axis stabilization apart from the altitude stabilization. And I will do this part first, even though the role is going to be similar, 
to the pitch. I will do this part first because it's just more exciting to do. Um, I will create a new function called stabilize. And like all the others, it's going to take in the delta time as a parameter. And this function is going to be really simple. We're going to get our engine array. We're going to do a for each loop on it. So we go through all of the engines that we have. And I am going to call on each of these. I'm going to call a function that I need to create a function called stabilize on the engine component. So let's go to the engine component, create a function called stabilize. This function will take in two parameters. One is called the desired altitude, which will just say to the engine, you need to reach this altitude. So the theory is that if all the engines try to well, let's just create another function, another variable called delta time here. Uh, and the theory is that every engine will try to reach the same altitude, which means that in principle they should tend towards stabilizing at the same altitude. And then uh, we have like a, a perfectly flat quadcopter, um, hopefully. So I'm just going to call the stabilize function on this. And the desired altitude is going to be the desired altitude that we have for the quadcopter already. And delta time is just going to be delta time. I'll just, you know, try to neat things a little bit as per usual. And then on complete, I'll just add a return node just for completion. And that's it. That's our stabilization um, function. So in terms of the engine component, uh, our stabilize function is going to be a little bit more uh, complex, but not too much. So we want to do some PID calculations for each of the engine. <laughs> which means that we need, if you remember, the integral and the error prior are passed by reference, which means we need to keep track of them outside of the PID calculations. So each of the engine components is going to keep track of their own uh, integral narrow prior. So I'm going to create an integral float value and a narrow prior error value to, to control this. And I know I'm going to need also a stabilization force multiplier. Uh, and I think that's it for this function. So uh, let's see, what do we need to do here? First things first, the current value of the uh, of this engine is going to be its own world location Z coordinate. So I'll get the world location uh, for this guy. I will split the struct pin to get the Z coordinate. This is the current value that this engine, this is basically the altitude that which this engine in particular is. The desired altitude I want this engine to be in is the desired value I passed to the PID calculations. The delta time is what I passed there. Now, the values I'm going to use here, feel free to tweak them. I will probably tweak them when I do the yaw part of this tutorial. But for now, these values should work uh, well. You see that they are not perfect, far from it. And that's why I want to tweak them. But feel free to play around with it and... and you know, get better results than I do. <laughs> um, so after we get this out force, I will want to um, I will want to multiply it by minus one because I want the reverse of this, and I also want to multiply this by the stabilization force multiplier value, which I am going to set for now to 300, seems like a sensible value. And then I am going to do add force. I'll just add to the forces that are to be applied on this engine. And that's it, basically. It will try to always maintain the same altitude uh, no matter what. So in principle, if I press play and I pitch forwards, oh, nothing happens. Oh, I think I forgot to call the stabilize function on the event graph. Yes, I did. 
So I need to call this stabilize function here. Let me just get some space in here because I know I'm going to put the end, end roll, handle roll in there. So I'll just make some space for it. So now if I press play and I pitch, oh, now it's trying to keep the same orientation. That is great. See, I tilt back and it tries to stay, it tries to stop itself from progressing. That's exactly what we want to do. And now the P, I and D parameters on the, on the stabilize function, those you can tweak to make this stopping faster, to have it rock a lot, a, a lot less if you want to, if you just put more effort into it, uh, or put a higher value on the P especially. There is a downside, however, and that's why I said I need to tweak it a little bit, is if you do, if you add too much of it, then you lose kind of the pitch control because since I'm doing always a stabilization, even though I'm handling the pitch, it will try to correct whatever input you are getting into. So you press W and it will immediately try to break it and not allow it to go further or go backwards. So I will tweak this later. And basically what I'm going to do probably is not do stabilization if there is any input uh, being applied to it or I just give it a limited amount of stabilization if there is input. Um, yeah, so, but I'll, I'll tweak it and I'll, I'll come back to you guys when I have the yaw part ready. So now the only thing we're missing for this tutorial is basically the roll. So the roll is going to be really simple. Uh, it's going to be... Actually, I'm, I'm just going to copy the, the pitch code. <laughs> code, I call it code, but this is not code. Even though it kind of does the same, but it's not code. Um, so handle pitch, we go to the event graph. I will create a new function called uh, handle roll. The handle roll will get the delta time as well. And I'm just going to paste the whole thing that we have for the pitch here. Um, with one difference, which is it's not going to be the quad pitch in here. It's going to be something else. And the pitch roll multiplier, this one will be the same because I'm, you know, using the same uh, value for both. And these are going to be different as well. So I'm going to apply different uh, forces to each engine depending on the how I want to roll left or right. So let's go to the, yeah, this is not going to compile, doesn't really matter. Let's go to the project settings. Uh, input, let's create a new axis mapping. Let's call this quad roll. And I will, let's see how the move right is done. So, uh, so right is positive, which means I'm going to do the same. So I will use D for positive. And I will use uh, A for negative, pretty standard, which means now I can use the roll, handle roll, no, sorry, quad roll uh, input value here. That's it. And the engines I'm going to use here are going to be, so one and four will do positive. <clears throat> force one and four will go positive so let's take a look here so one and four so the engines on the left remember this is the correct view from the quad the engines on the left will do a positive um, uh, power so the the and the ones on the right so three uh, sorry uh, yeah two and three will do negative, which means the, the quad will try to roll to the right side in this, in this occasion and reverse if the value is negative. So one, four and two and three. And should compile now. I need to go to the event graph, add the handle roll in here. Let's just create a nice reroute node here if I can blah, if I can grab this guy okay cool so 
compile, save, let's save everything, let's play, and let's try to roll. Oh, wow. And we didn't need to do anything for the civilization because all the engines are trying to basically compensate and go towards the same altitude. It just works. I can just pitch and roll and it just works. Okay, that's it, guys. Um, yeah, you can take out the, the debug lines if you want. I just find it interesting to see the amount of force that is being applied. So if I land this thing, you can see that the the power reduces and if i try to apply some power to it you can see the power slightly increasing until it lifts off from the ground and then it kind of hoovers in place ah, pretty cool okay hope you liked it uh i will try to do the yo part uh whenever i have, I have some time and do some tweaking on the pid values and i will make sure to let you know on the next tutorial until then have fun and I hope you learned. See you later.